students, welcome to the lecture on global trade operation and supply network application and after this lecture, we will be able to learn the following objectives. Discuss operation strategy, define multi-domestic operation strategy, describe transnational business strategy, explain sourcing strategies and procurement processes, discuss internal strategy for the role of the purchasing process. Describe supplier relationship management. Let's start with the concept of global trade operation and supply network application. We live in a world that is highly interconnected by a bewildering array of complex economic transactions, social and environmental problems, and international political collaboration and conflicts. Examples from global economics are found in the news every day. The importance of international connection in trade, investment and skilled services can be illustrated by considering the apparently simple act of making and bringing to market an item of apparel, say a fashionable woolen men's suit. The initial task is to design the suit. A highly creative activity that generally takes place in the headquarters of a major fashion label such as Armani or Hugo Boss. These locations are most likely to be in somewhat higher productivity economies such as China, Malaysia or Mexico and the firms involved typically worked as independent subcontractors to many retailers rather than affiliates of one. Let us now understand the operation strategy. As operation is, after all, about the day-to-day -day creation and delivery of products and services. So how can it be strategic? In fact, the issue is one of distinguishing between two words which are similar but have different meanings. These are operations and operational. An operation refers to those parts of the business which are concerned with producing products and services. The operational side of marketing refers to the day-by-day -day tactics of how to manage things like advertising, pricing and so on. It is just the same with operations. Operations strategy looks at the long-term issues of how to manage the resources which produce products and services. Content and process. The content of operation strategy is concerned with the specific decision which shape and develop the long-term direction of the operation. Think of content as the building blocks of an operation strategy. The process of operation strategy refers to the procedure which are used to formulate operation strategies. It is the way we go about the activity of devising strategy. Think of operation strategy content as what the organization is deciding to do and process as how the organization has made that decision. Top down versus bottom up. Perspective of operation strategy. One view of operation strategy, the more traditional one, is operation strategy is one of several functional strategies which are governed by decision taken at the top of the organization tree. According to this top-down approach, overall business strategy set the general direction of the organization. This is then interpreted by the different functional areas of the company, marketing, finance, operation, etc. in their functional strategies. What is important to remember is that the pure top-down view of operation strategy is simplistic in the sense that it does not recognize the importance of learning through experience. Market requirements versus operation resources. The market requirement perspective starts from the common sense notion that any operation strategy should reflect what the organization is trying to do in its market. Companies compete in different ways. Some may compete primarily on cost, others on the excellence of their products or services, others on high levels of customer service, others on customizing their products and services to individual customer needs and so on. The operation function therefore must respond to this by providing the capabilities which allow it perform in an appropriate manner to satisfy the requirements of its market. Now moving on to the next topic, we will now study the multi-domestic operation strategy. The term multi-domestic has been used to describe a set of strategies used by companies that operate in more than one country at a time. 
as smaller businesses expand their operation into market overseas, they will naturally tend to act differently than their larger competitors, many of them choosing a multi-domestic strategy. The best definition of a multi-domestic company is a business that uses a different approach in each of the markets it operates in. Competitive advantage when considering an expansion into a new market, it makes sense for any firm to choose a region where it already has a competitive advantage. If a business is able to offer a product or service no one else is already providing, it will have a high chance of success. Decentralized a multi-domestic company is more decentralized and it allows the management in each country to operate with some degree of autonomy and to adopt differing practices from one another. Independence Often in multi-domestic companies, the multiple branches of the company becomes independent of one another. Though they all rely on the same financial resources, they are able to operate and identify the suppliers separately from one another. This can be an advantage when it comes to adjusting to local condition, but it can also become a challenge if the separate branches end up competing with each other or with one another over who should receive a higher priority culture different business cultures will develop based on the culture of another country or industry as a company expands into business environments that have different requirements it makes sense to become multi domestic and this allows for the formation of separate but effective organizational cultures Organizational cultures cannot be simply mandated from the top down but must emerge from the day-to-day -day tasks of a business as workers seek to discover what the most effective practices will be. Multi-domestic versus global strategic plans. In the modern global world of business, it is increasingly important for firms to have a worldwide presence. This can be achieved with either a global strategy or a multi-domestic strategy. Although both strategies are international, they have distinct differences. International managers should understand these two international strategies and how they can be used. Global Business Strategy A firm employing a global business strategy operates in several markets around the world but offers the same product or service with only minor changes in the local market. These businesses are typically very centralized with the research and development and decision making taking place in the home country. Coca-Cola uses a global business strategy. Multi-domestic business strategy. Firms employing a multi-domestic business strategy operate worldwide but in a very different manner than global firms. Multi-domestic firms are highly decentralized with strategies and decisions being made large in the local market. Advantages. The advantage of a global strategy is that it allows for greater efficiency because everything is centralized. With a global strategy, there is no duplication of duties. Furthermore, it is possible to produce goods in one location and to export them worldwide. The advantage of a multi-domestic strategy is that it allows a firm to be flexible to local needs and responsive to local demand. This can allow a firm to better serve its customers. Disadvantages Firms using global strategy may find themselves at disadvantage because they do not understand local needs. For products like clothing and food that are sensitive to cultural differences, it can be detrimental for the firm to not adapt to local needs. Firms using a multi-domestic strategy may have difficulties competing with global businesses that have lower operating costs. This is particularly true in the commodities business where prices are more important than local adaptation. Now we will discuss the transnational business strategy. A transnational business conducts operation in several countries with varying degrees of coordination and integration of strategy and operations. According to Newcastle Business School professor George Stonehouse and his colleagues, a transnational strategy combines global reach, coordination of operations and leveraging unique advantages of local markets to drive sales, market share and profit growth. Basics 
Transnational strategy involves operating in different world markets, designing responsive organizational structures and establishing value-added activities that exploit national similarities and differences. Stonehouse defines transnational strategies management as interactions of organizational learning and performance improvements. The foundation of a transnational strategy is a global vision that would customize implementation for local markets and regions. Country environment. The country environment is an important aspect of transnational strategy. In a March 2007 interview with Harvard Business School working knowledge writer Sean Silverthorne, Harvard professor Richard H. K. Witter suggests that countries with a sound fiscal and monetary environment, secure property rights, and anti-corruption policies attract transnational companies. The development of skills training and support infrastructure are also important characteristic of countries that are appealing for transnational companies. Branding Transnational businesses may use global brands or create specialized local brands. In an October 2007 Harvard Business School Working Knowledge article, Harvard professor John A. Quelch cites the cases of American and Japanese automakers to suggest that developing a market strategy around one set of brands is more efficient than having several different brands for different regions of the world. Global brands share certain characteristics such as a focus on a single product category and consistent market positioning. Contingency planning Transnational strategy also includes contingency planning, natural disaster such as the March 2011 earthquake in Japan can cause severe disruption in the supply chain. In May 2011 interview with Harvard Business School, working knowledge writer Dennis Fisser, Harvard professor Willie C. Chase suggests that manufacturers and suppliers often lack contingency plans and find themselves scrambling for alternatives when disaster strikes. Consideration Other people use the term interchangeably. Global, multinational, international and transnational businesses have subtle differences. International is a generic term that applies to all businesses with foreign operation. A multinational business operates in several foreign countries, but it delegates strategic decision-making responsibility to its overseas subsidiaries, which operate as autonomous businesses. Operational Procurement Planning The ultimate goal of procurement planning is coordinated and integrated action to fulfill a need for goods, services or works in a timely manner and at a reasonable cost. Early and accurate planning is essential to avoid last-minute, emergency or ill-planned procurement which is contrary to open, efficient and effective and consequently transparent procurement. In addition, most potential savings in the procurement process are achieved by improvements in the planning stages. Advanced identification of suitable suppliers of potential products frequently requested in emergency operations including confirmation by suppliers on willingness to respond on short notice. Development of standard specification TOR or SOW for products or services or works requested in emergency operation, effective and timely solicitation of offers, award of contracts and delivery of the goods, services and works required, early requisition to reduce any delays in procurement and timely delivery to project sites, avoidance of unnecessary existences and urgencies enabling full competition and full compliance with standard rules and procedures. Anna, I clearly see how I can add value and contribute to the success of Win Plus, but I still need to understand which steps I have to execute when running a procurement process. You can visualize the procurement processes for recurrent purchases, like the blades, as a figure eight with two closed loops. One is an upstream loop and the other one a downstream loop. OK. Can you please describe the activities part of the upstream loop? Of course. The upstream loop includes all the activities that take place prior to the finalization of the contract, which is also called the commitment point. Needs assessment, market analysis and supplier selection are all examples of activities that are part of the upstream loop. The upstream process itself is also called sourcing. 
Oh, I see. Now I understand what sourcing represents. It groups all the tasks I must execute before signing the contract with the best blade supplier for the new low-cost wind turbine. What about the downstream activities? The downstream activities include all steps that must be completed in order to make sure the blades are ordered and delivered in line with the contractual agreements. Order fulfillment, invoice payment and the supplier performance measurement are part of the downstream loop. The downstream process itself is also called operational procurement. The circular patterns of the two procurement loops show that the procurement processes are continuous. The downstream activities will provide input for the upstream activities and vice versa. For one-time purchases, such as a new machine for the assembly plant, the process can be best visualized as a circle. Each step in the circle will be executed sequentially. Procurement planning clarifies what is needed and when it is needed to both user and buyer. Effective procurement planning enables the UN organization and its staff to work smoothly to achieve the organization's goals with the right quality and quantity of inputs in place. Ineffective procurement planning may result in failure to achieve those goals, putting in jeopardy the FRR and procurement principles and causing damage to the credibility of the organization. Let us now study about sourcing strategies and procurement processes. Procurement function is considered to be a strategic initiative and seen to be adding value to entire business process. Profile of the procurement managers as change and expectation from these managers are different. Procurement process and paperwork is today managed by the ERP system which drive the procurement business process. Procurement function. Procurement function as explained above is one part of the sourcing function. In an ERP enabled environment, procurement function consists of detailed indenting process, procurement budget management, purchase order release, shipment scheduled planning with seller, coupled with ensuring compliance with documentation and system updating processes. All these processes are driven by ERP. Procurement function works closely with procurement logistic or inbound supply chain. A procurement professional needs to have operational knowledge of logistical activities in supply chain network, the various agencies, knowledge of policies, custom rules, taxation, commercial, logistical and customs documentation beside knowledge of commercial trade rules and terms. Procurement process and sourcing strategy. Though interlinked closely, both procurement process and sourcing strategy are not one and same. Sourcing strategy deals with planning, designing and building a reliable and competitive supplier base, determining the strategy for procurement, defining pricing strategies and supply chain requirements. The strategy involves integration of its objectives in line with or conforming to the objectives of stakeholders in operations, finance, marketing and distribution. During the first phase, we investigate the different options for sourcing modes. The three elements, location, ownership, and management style, are plotted in our global sourcing strategy model. This results in eight different sourcing modes. We work with you to identify the appropriate sourcing modes for your specific situation. The next phase is to plan the scenarios. We use matching business cases to find the most beneficial sourcing mode. When the right sourcing mode has been selected, your organization must be prepared for implementation. During this phase, we support you in selecting the right service provider or help you to set up your own shared service center. We prepare your organization for the shift of workload that will follow. During the migration or transition phase, the governance model must be aligned. Critical knowledge and experience must be captured. This phase is also the time to train your organization for the new situation. In addition, service levels and key performance indicators will be defined. In the delivery or operations phase, it is important to continuously monitor, control and manage both the service provider and the demand organization. By doing this, we ensure that both short and long term benefits accrue. Organizations change, environments change as well. After selecting and implementing the right sourcing mode, 
it is essential to continuously evaluate and adapt your chosen sourcing strategy. Shift in sourcing. Strategic approach. Having realized that suppliers play key important role in the supply chain network of the business, there has been a change in the way organization perceived and approached supplier relationship. Several factors have contributed to the shifting of the perceived value of supplier partnership. Complex business models at global scales coupled with market demands have necessitated companies to set up manufacturing or assembly facilities closer to markets as well as in locations where conversation costs are relatively cheaper. This necessitates that the business be supported by a solid vendor base which is able to ensure supplies at all locations. Advancement in technology and R&D capability enhancement is leading to shorter product life cycles. New versions and product innovation means product become obsolete faster. Beside new introduction of products depend upon speedy development of new design supplier parts and the suppliers having to keep pace with changing design and requirements. Therefore, management have realized the fact that to be able to develop global business model, they have to develop a supplier partnership and work with collaboration spirit and invest in developing the supplier capabilities as well as invest into building the relationship. Supplier management is no longer transactional importance of strategic sourcing skills. Strategic sourcing skills play an important role in the cost structure and competitiveness of small and large businesses. These skills involve analyzing high volume purchases and developing long term partnership with a select group of suppliers that are capable of providing quality products and services at low cost. High volume purchases are the best candidates for strategic sourcing because they are likely to have the greatest impact on lowering cost structures. Cost management. Strategic sourcing benefits both buyers and suppliers. It benefits buyer because they can negotiate lower unit prices for high volume purchases, thus reducing cost of goods sold and maintaining the ability to price the products competitively. It benefits suppliers because they are able to sell a significant portion of their output which makes planning easier and gives management long term cash flow visibility. Companies can also use strategic sourcing to procure services. For example, a startup technology company could outsource its non-core activities such as payroll processing which would allow management to focus on core activities such as product development and marketing of goods sold and maintaining the ability to price their products competitively. It benefits suppliers because they are able to sell a significant portion of their output which makes planning easier and gives management long-term cash flow visibility. Companies can also use strategic sourcing to procure services. For example, a startup technology company could outsource its non-core activities such as payroll processing which would allow management to focus on core activities such as product development and marketing. Supply stability. Strategic sourcing can help build stable supply partnerships. For example, restaurants rely on their suppliers for key ingredients such as meat and produce because a disruption in the quality or quantity of these supplies could affect their ability to serve customer. Close relationship can also lead to quality improvement over time because suppliers and customer can work together to measure defect rate and identity the root causes of these defects. Risk management Strategic sourcing can help in risk management. Close supplier relationship can help companies identify and resolve potential problems quickly. For example, if a strategic supplier is having cash flow problems, its main customer may advance some working capital to allow it to continue operation. If the financial problems are severe, a company may have to look for alternative suppliers or consider acquiring the supplier. Consideration Senior management has to champion strategic sourcing initiatives because it takes time to identify and qualify suppliers. Companies usually have to inspect suppliers' facilities and integrate order management and inventory management systems. Businesses should establish high-level steering committees for managing and monitoring these initiatives and at least one member of this committee should have supply management expertise. Corporate strategy and structure the traditional commercial business goal, put more simpler, is to make money for our owners. 
how businesses go about doing that is where they differ larger companies will have a vision and or mission statement and one or more goals these define in what market the organization will operate in and how it will go about differentiating itself from its competitors they also help the organization prioritize its limited resources organization can also vary in terms of their culture and values while recognizing these differences there is an equally important one related to how an organization is structured in terms of governance management and accountability often size and range will be a major contributor here the role of procurement while there are many definition of procurement and purchasing in a simple phrase procurement is a profession of external resource management it is about ensuring the organization maximizes the value it gains from the resources it needs which are outside its direct ownership and control to quote CIPSA again working both upstream and downstream of the purchase decision a professional buyer can facilitate the business process help capture the business benefits of the project protect the business from risk and reduce lifetime cost procurement is a key business process since if it is not done well cost can escalate the business be exposed to unnecessary risk and customers let down through lack of supply it is much more than chasing simple cost savings procurement strategies research undertaken by the abertian group in the usa the cpo's agenda march 2005 identified five primary strategies that procurement leaders are adopting to move from a focus on cost containment to one of value generation these strategies were improve supplier development and collaboration enhance and integrate procurement automation infrastructure adopt low cost country supply initiatives transition to a central led procurement organization increase the amount of spend under management while improving spend compliance organization were categorized into three groups depending on whether they were recognized to be purchasing improvers purchasing leaders or purchasing pioneers they identified various strategies and initiatives associated with each group the initiatives associated with purchasing improvers were focused on functional improvement and including such approaches as price benchmarking supplier rationalization collaborative buying and volume leverage broader process change characterized the purchasing leaders initiatives which included standardized sourcing supplier management e sourcing offshore sourcing and lean supply achieving goal alignment below is a suggested five step process to developing your procurement strategy in conjunction with your stakeholders assess your current situation including your company's culture organizational structure people organizational maturity together with knowledge of your key stakeholders and your current credibility with them develop a draft based on the assessment results ensuring links to company strategy and stakeholder needs in collaboration with stakeholders set goals which address the requirements uses their language and ensure there is internal ownership within procurement build buy in with senior company leaders to workshops and presentation document the plan circulate for final revision and gain demonstrable commitment execute your plan ensuring that you gain some quick wins measure your progress communicate the strategy and progress widely share credit with the business and keep marketing internally maturity cycle of procurement procurement is an organization within an organization which is there to optimize the acquisition of goods and services it is a relatively new profession and will follow a maturity cycle over time the initiatives and level of involvement within the organization will be driven by where you are positioned on this cycle supplier relationship have become increasingly important in ensuring this success at a time when many organizations are turning to outsourcing to save money the quality of your relationship with these suppliers can have a critical impact on the success of your company supplier relationship management srm a subset of supply chain management is concerned with understanding who your most important suppliers are and how you can focus your time and energy on creating and maintaining more effective strategic relationship with them
ultimately an effective SRM resolution gives your organization a competitive edge by allowing you to reduce direct and indirect costs and improve bottom line profitability understand what you are buying and from whom minimize the risk of supply chain disruption select the best suppliers to gain advantage over competitors streamline the supply chain management process by collaborating with business units across the enterprise assure that your organization resources are prioritized on the most critical suppliers why you need an effective srm solution sas srm contains the technology to monitor key performance indicators through a scorecard approach creating snapshots of how well an organization is meeting its goals and objectives. SAS SRM is the only solution that provides robust and flexible tools to consolidate information from many different systems across the enterprise to give you a holistic view of your direct and indirect spends, apply advantage analytics to turn data into meaningful procurement information so you can not only understand your current status but also model optimal sourcing strategies. Distribute information within the organization so immediate action can be taken to address areas where performance objectives are not being met. The Supplier Intelligent Advantage Through an integrated set of data management and analytical application, SAS SRM helps you leverage the investment you have already made in operational system and application by adding a layer of intelligence you cannot get anywhere else. Different information for different levels of your organization throughout your procurement organization different people require different information to do their job effectively now in the end let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture the ultimate goal of procurement planning is coordinated and integrated action to fulfill a need for goods services or works in a timely manner and at a reasonable cost modern day procurement managers manage Procurement and sourcing functions both at strategic and operational levels. Sourcing strategy deals with planning, designing and building a reliable and competitive supplier base, determining the strategy for procurement, defining pricing strategies and supply chain requirements. The initiatives associated with purchasing improperers were focused on functional improvement and including such approaches as price, benchmarking, supplier, rationalization, collaborative buying and volume leverage. An effective SRM solution is an information system that provides supplier intelligence through an enterprise-wide integrated view of a company's relationship with its suppliers and the commodities or services they provide.